So it was December 7 in 2001 that Weizen was established, but uh, the idea uh, for Weizen was actually established 10 years before that. I was just hesitating for 10 years before really uh, going into the business of my own. Uh, in, in 91, uh, around this time, the, the Soviet Union was just disestablished, as we all remember, Gorbachev's speech in the, in the television, uh, telling that, you know, everything will be gone. And I was serving in the, in the Finnish Air Force, and in the Air Force we had very hard requirements for monitoring the Finnish airspace. So we had to be real-time, we had to be scalable, so, so we, we, we had to uh, maintain the peacetime awareness, but at the same time we had to scale to uh, in all the rehearsals and also in some real situations to the, the phase where we would uh, have to implement hundreds or more radars, uh, hundreds or more sensors, uh, and run much bigger organization in, in just a few days or in, sometimes in a few hours. Also, fault tolerance was something that was critical because, of course, the, uh, the, the hostile forces or the enemy, they, were, they always knew about uh, the, the main radar stations and uh, other facilities, so the, the Air Force had to be very fault tolerant and, and regroup if something bad happened. And also because of our quite big country, it, it was inherently distributed throughout the country. So, so, so these were the, the three elements that I, I learned by heart uh, during that, that one year. And uh, I, I started thinking that do I see that in the industry, in, in telecommunications or, or in enterprise businesses or even in energy industries. And I realized that most of the monitoring systems were quite monolithic such that, the, that they were not designed for scalability, fault tolerance, or distribution. And uh, 10 years after, I was able to find a team who had seen the same problems in telecommunications, uh, especially in large IP networks and, uh, and in networks serving large multinational uh, IT enterprises, which some of them are speaking today, that. Uh, that those systems were designed uh, just to one size and they were not scalable. So we, during these 10 years, we have developed a platform as such that you, we can add and remove components on the fly and the system is always on, much like the radar system uh, that uh, we were uh, developing within the Air Force uh, in the early 90s. And the one thing is also quite interesting that if, if we look at the uh, real-time requirements in, in 91 and even in 2001, uh, if, you, if you wanted to provide, let's say, a couple of thousand people email services, uh, in 2001 it was a huge project. It was a, a project of many people. You bought servers, you implemented software, you, you made all kinds of uh, plans, but nowadays uh, you can do the same thing within one hour. You can just use your credit card, you can purchase uh, 2,000 email accounts, you can distribute those accounts to people, so it's much more real-time, and the systems must be scalable to support uh, those kinds of purchases. Uh, when you're buying books or from Amazon, uh, when you place the order, sometimes you receive product within 24 hours. So, so the, the industry has changed a lot during uh, the last 20 years towards the real-time requirements uh, of, of all kinds of platforms. And, and that's why um, I'm, I'm really, I feel entitled uh, that, that I, in the Air Force I got that same kind of thinking and, and training. In, in, in today's customer cases, we are uh, presenting, for instance, uh, we have a presentation from Kone, and uh, one of the earliest uh, systems I, uh, I was familiar with was the Kone Connection system. You've seen the stickers in the elevators of Connection, and that means the, the remote monitoring system of the elevators. 
that was a pioneering system already developed in the 80s, so that the, the elevator actually calls to the support center automatically and uh, delivers information about the health of the elevator. Uh, the only challenge there was that uh, it was an in-house system for, for Kone only, and, uh, and that, that was one of the main competitive edges, as far as I can see, for Kone to, to become the, the leading elevator manufacturer. Uh, in, in Basin, what we want to do is to offer this same kind of capabilities to the multitude of industries, whether they are voltage drives or electric motors or wind turbines or, or, or all kinds of hardware. And uh, what we have learned during the last uh, three to four years is that most of the innovation and research and development is actually happening on the software side, even for a very concrete things like gasoline engines and uh, diesel generators and all kinds of devices like that. So that the software part uh, must be real time, it must be upgradable all the time, all of the features that we have developed for the last 10 years. I in the future, uh, in, in Basin, uh, right now we see that the, uh, the smart grid market, the energy, utility market is the most interesting and and why it is such is that uh, the, the energy industry has been stagnant for the last almost 80 years what comes to the measurement and optimization of energy in general how much energy is consumed how much does it cost it has been very relaxed but but nowadays uh, because we want to achieve more and more efficiency all the time and stop uh, wasting energy, uh, our platform can very quickly provide utilities ways of uh, providing real-time information towards the end customers and also using that same information uh, to, to optimize the, the production. And if you have seen photovoltaic uh, booms, for instance in Germany right now, uh, there are hundreds of thousands of photovoltaic panels on people's, on top of people's houses, but those are not connected really to the grid, so that people are not being paid exactly how much those panels uh, actually generate. And the reason is that it has been impossible, or it has been considered impossible, to collect information from every single panel and, and then feed that information to systems and then directly pay people back uh, the, how much they are uh, generating. And, and I'm still hearing that quite often that, you know, that's too much data. But there is no such thing as too much data. You can always scale. Uh, and, uh, but, but there are always these notions that, uh, that you know, databases cannot handle uh, more than this amount. If you engineer and design systems properly, then, then you can actually scale up to millions or hundreds of millions of targets every minute or every, every, every second even. In, uh, during the last three years, we have used a lot of resources uh, towards the energy industry, but at the end, I have to say that it is actually an easier market to penetrate compared to the legacy telecommunications or enterprise IT because uh, the competition there ha hasn't picked up even yet. So we can see that the, uh, uh, the utilities want to see new kinds of solutions. And uh, even though we are working with several partners uh, like Nokia Siemens Networks and the likes uh, with the utilities, it's still, uh, we do have the competitive edge right now provide these solutions. And uh, during the next, uh, let's say, two to three years, uh, we will be emphasizing that area even more, although we will keep very good care of our existing uh, enterprise and telecom customers and, and also expand on those. But the, the main focus is where the much bigger data is. Then after three to four, five years, uh, we can see that there are many interesting areas for big data management applications, like for instance healthcare. If I take one example, I do have high blood pressure and uh, 
the highest granularity measurement I can get for that is once per 15 minutes, then disassembled um, and re-read after one day. But how does that help me if I get a stroke today, that, that information is disassembled tomorrow and analyzed by a doctor? Because the in blood pressure, the, the problem is that the limbic system of controlling blood pressure failed at some point. You would need real-time data to actually detect the, the anomalies in the, in the limbic system and the uh, autonomic nervous system. But right now, that is not done, and once again, because it's, uh, the data is deemed to be too much.